Hi, I'm Jeff Sangstack, the author of this Infinite Skills course on Adobe After Effects CS6. In this lesson, I want to give you an overview of the course. If you have the outline of the course in front of you, this explanation will basically follow that outline, but I'm going to add some context to it as well. So I think it's worth your while to watch this to get a sense of how this course is going to fit together. We're going to start off by explaining what exactly After Effects CS6 is. Now, you probably already have a basic idea about that, but I'm going to show you a project that has about 20 comps, as they're called, inside it to give you a sense of the many different things that are going to be covered in this course. Then I'm going to explain the After Effects workflow and workspace. Now, the thing about the After Effects workflow, it's a little bit different than a lot of software products out there in that there isn't sort of a standard workflow that takes you from the beginning to the end of a project. After Effects is sort of a collection of a whole bunch of different features and you cherry pick from those features depending on the thing you want to accomplish. So there isn't sort of a standard workflow from beginning to end, but there is a standard workflow just to get things set up. And I'm going to explain that and also walk you through the workspace and how that all connects together. I'm going to explain how you create a project and import assets. Now they like to talk about importing footage in After Effects parlance, but I like to call it assets because it's not really footage anymore. It's video and image files and graphics, things like that. So we'll import assets. And in fact, you don't import them. You just create links to them. And I'll explain all that when we talk about that part of the project. And then we'll go on to working with layers in a composition. This really is the meat of After Effects. You create compositions and inside the compositions are layers. If you've worked with Photoshop, you get sort of the concept of layers. It's different than working with a video editing product where you've got tracks and multiple clips in a single track. In After Effects, you have layers and only one object per layer. Each of those layers you then work with in some fashion. You can apply effects to it, you can apply masks to it, but those layers are really where most of the work is done. So I'll go on from the layers discussion to talk about how you modify and animate properties within those layers. You can make properties change over time. That really is the power of After Effects that you can make things move over time as opposed to Photoshop where it's much more difficult to do that. So this is really the, the big thing about After Effects is that you can make things change over time like scale or rotation or certain kinds of effect properties. We'll go over that in some detail. Then we'll go on to creating, formatting, and animating text. Some production studios just do this. This one part of After Effects is such an important thing that they'll focus only on animating text. If you see text moving in an advertisement, for example, it was probably made inside After Effects. Then we'll go on to drawing and animating shapes. There's some great shape tools inside After Effects, but you can go way beyond simply drawing a shape. There's all kinds of cool ways that you could animate shapes in terms of how they look, their color, their behavior. I'll explain that. Then we'll go on to using paint and other brush tools. Now you can paint things as you can paint things in other products, but you can then animate those paint strokes. You can have them change their appearance and their color. One of those brush tools is called the Roto Brush. This allows you to select an object in motion in a clip and remove it from the background so you can apply effects to just that moving object. It's a great little tool. Then I'll explain how to use masks to highlight regions or morph objects. Masks are things that let you just select part of a region inside a clip. And you can have those masks change their shape over time so you can take an object and morph it from one thing to another as well. We're going to then work with track mats and blending modes. If you've worked with Premiere Pro or other nonlinear editors like Premiere Pro, you know that you can use something called the track mat key, where you apply a graphic to a clip such that that graphic highlights part of the clip in certain ways. That's such an important part of the video production process in After Effects that it's built into all the layers. Track mats are there for your use if you care to use them in every single layer inside After Effects. And then there are blending modes, which you might have seen in Photoshop or Premiere Pro, for example. And these are when you blend two or more layers together to try to create a pleasing mix of those two different layers. Then we're going to go on to distorting and animating objects with the Puppet Tool. Now you can use the Puppet Tool to take, let's say, a character and move its arms and legs or its torso or its head or whatever and have it go across the screen. You can animate these changes that you apply with the Puppet Tool. You can also change objects, just distort objects with the Puppet Tool. It's a fun tool to work with. Then I'll go into some detail about applying effects and transitions. Effects are a huge part of After Effects. After all, it is After Effects, right? And there are just tons of video effects and some audio effects and transitions inside After Effects, including a huge set of effects from a company called Psychor. And in CS6, they added even more Psychor effects. So I'll devote an entire chapter just to Psychor effects. Then I'll go on to explain how you do some color correction using effects inside After Effects. Then we'll move on to changing time. We'll talk about going to slow motion, reverse motion, or freeze frames. 
will control properties with parenting and expressions. Now, up to this point, you'll be controlling properties using keyframes, but there are other ways to control properties using what's called parenting, where you have one layer control how another layer behaves. Or you can use expressions, which are these mathematical formulas that also can control how things behave, where you can incorporate what another layer does and have it control something else, or just use a mathematical formula to do that. So I'll explain that as well. We'll use what's called composition nesting and precomposing. This is a hierarchy that you can set up to help you organize your workflow. So you can take a composition and nest it in another composition, or you can select a bunch of layers in one composition and turn that into a single composition. If that sounds a little confusing, it'll make a whole lot more sense when we talk about that in that chapter. Finally, I'm going to discuss 3D. After Effects has all kinds of 3D features, including just setting up 3D space, where you have 2D objects inside 3D space, but you can have cameras or simulated cameras and lights that really give it a 3D feel as you move through the scene. New to CS6 is the ability to create 3D shapes and text. You can take a shape or text and extrude it, make it thicker, add a bevel to it, and change the color for the front, the back, the sides, and the bevels, and then animate those things. You can track objects in motion. You can have After Effects follow some object in motion, take those motion keyframes and apply them to something else to have that other thing follow that motion, be it text or an effect, what have you. You can stabilize shaky shots inside After Effects. For example, if you have a handheld shot where there's just a little bit too much camera motion, you can then have After Effects automatically compensate for that using a couple of different tools. Finally, new to CS6 is the ability to track camera moves in simulated 3D space. This takes some explanation and probably need to see it to really understand it. But if you have a camera move, for example, a point of view shot where the camera is moving forward through the scene or backward through the scene, or you're trucking it left to right, or you've got a pan, you can have After Effects analyze that camera move and then allow you to put things into the scene that look like they're in a 3D space, like a word or an effect or something like that, that somehow connects to the scene in a 3D fashion, or simply connects to the scene against, let's say, a building. You can put a sign in a building, and that sign will stick to the building because of this tracked camera move. It's really a very cool feature. So after you've done all these things, you've cherry-picked from all these various features to create whatever it is you want to do, you then need to export that. You need to render your project. And there are multiple ways to export your project in the various different file formats so that people can see your excellent work. So I'm going to cover all these things in this course. And if you're new to After Effects, I recommend you go through the course in order because I do try to reinforce things as I go along. Feel free to jump ahead if you'd like, but there may be things that are confusing because you haven't encountered them yet. If you are an After Effects veteran, then you may just want to jump to things that are of interest to you or look at some of the new stuff like the tracking camera moves and extruding 3D shapes and text. In any event, my goal is that by your studying this course, you'll end up making some great After Effects projects.